All right, so we have 48S in here now. This is 48S 1P pack. I've started with the cover on. You know, I thought I was going to have plenty of room, but I don't. Uh, it's very, very snug, but it will fit. So we'll take the case off. First of all, you'll notice the switch here is accessible. The screw will still screw into it. Let me take the cover off. You're greeted with the 48 S1P pack, which is 12 modules. Now, what I had to do here is I had to move the lens sight back here, uh, which is not a problem. Uh, you know, the high voltage lines will now have to come over and across, which is not problematic at all. And it'll actually make it easier to install in this particular configuration. Now, you will need to put capped on or some kind of insulation material here so that the wire does not get abraded as it comes through. Better yet is to put it in some kind of uh, sleeve like this. So um, this is the negative lead I'll show you here in a second. I just kind of put some sleeve on it so you can see what it looks like. This is just a protective sleeve since we're now going to be snaking around. You can do the same thing here. Now you need a smaller diameter uh, cord here because you do any narrow uh, height you'll have once we get a little bracket over there. I've kind of simulated the bracket by just putting cardboard underneath. The bracket will be eight amps. I put a quarter inch of cardboard and I figured it would collapse 50% of the way. So what we have, and I'll just point with the cord here, uh, the cable, the IMA cable harness, which typically comes over here, now goes through this hole. There's a hole on the bottom already. I didn't cut it or anything, it's there. And so it plugs in there. It snakes through here where it plugs in to the Linsight module. Uh, and then it also comes across, and there is enough clearance here. I, I verified there's actually quite a bit of clearance above this. So even though the switch here is flush, it's because the cover actually has a recess for that switch. Now the only connector that does not actually fit is the one that goes to the DC-DC. See how it's just a hair short? But all you have to do, there's a little tab that comes off, and so that just won't be actually permanently fixed. So it'll, it'll still plug in, no problem. But yeah, that is the uh, 48. S pack. It is tight. Uh, this is kind of the uh, hacker's creed one, if you will. Um, so it, it will require you know, just a little bit more finagling, but it does work. Uh, the fan con connector will need to be even longer. If you remember in my last video, where's that fan connector? Here it is. Uh, you're already having to cut this because of the two fans that install in there. The, they're non-OEM fans. But you'll just need to make sure you cut it kind of right close to the fan so that it's long enough. Um, alternatively, you could just splice it. Now the uh, high voltage leads, again, there are four of them. I, I made one of them the negative lead, beefy, just to show you. There's plenty of room. Um, you'll want to route them first because once you get the uh, lens side in there, it's kind of uh, tight in there once you get this wire harness. So these should be underneath. So if I pull the IMA battery harness out here. You can see how I have it routed. See how it goes through that hole. Uh, set that there. Now all these other cables, again, you'll want to put them in some kind of conduit here so that they don't short out. So they'll just route around. Here's our air dam. I'll remove it for now. There's plenty of space. But... So this will route around. You'll hook it up to your negative right here. And then you'll have the two fuse and switch leads, which will also wrap up around here. They'll also be in a shield and they'll also be thick cables. And they'll come around here. Now on a 48S pack, you wanna put this in, in the middle. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that you have to be either between 12 plus or 13 minus. You can also be every, every 12 cells after that. So we'll wanna put that in the middle so it'll basically go between uh, six and 12. So. One of them will hop in here and the other will hop in here. And then you also have, of course, the positive lead, which will come over and connect all the way over there. Now I'm just reaching blindly in here right now. It's because I don't actually have the cells connected. Uh, once you get the bus bars on all of these cells, this is high voltage. This will be, you know, 195 volts or so. So don't just go reaching around in here. You can get yourself shocked and killed real quick. Uh, standard caveats always apply. Now also to put this pack in, uh, I just assembled it in here. I did not have to take out the DC-DC converter. Uh, what I did is I just turned this was up and I just kept setting them on in the correct order. 
When it was done, I kind of loosely tightened these screws and then I turned it over. And of course the junction board wasn't there, so it gave me a little more working room. And then I just tightened it up. And when this mounts on the bracket, you'll tighten these screws all the way before they even go in the bracket, top and bottom. There's one, two, three, and then four on the bottom there you can't see. You'll tighten these all the way and then the bracket will just have little legs that stick up. So once you've tightened them all the way, you will slide them into the bracket. So that way we get maximum compression on this battery like it's designed to have and that way it doesn't expand and contract with the heat. So anyway, it does fit. Uh, the one remaining concern with the 48S configuration is the RF noise from the DC leads. So these cables are actually shielded to about right here. The cables that we're going to be putting on there probably won't be shielded, uh, but if we do run into issues with noise, uh, and, I, and I can definitely vet that out with a scope to see if we get noise on our lines since they're running in parallel now, this guy will be running on top of the high voltage leads which will be running on the bottom. If we do get noise, then we'll have to use shielded leads. Now this is only for the 48S configuration, the 36S uh, keeps the, the wires are really kind of out of the way, they don't really cross and then travel in parallel. Uh, they do cross in, in, in one spot and are perpendicular, but you don't really couple a lot of noise. It's when you go together that you pick up a lot of the noise from the system. So yeah, this is the, the 48S. Now again, uh, Linsight will require one additional module. So the Linsight PCB can only support up to 36S cells. So I'll show you the actual additional PCB you need. So I've got the Linsight out here. I actually took a PCB out just so I can show you what I mean when I say that it only supports 36 cells. If you look here, we have three different connectors. Each one of these connectors supports 12 cells. Now these are isolated battery sense devices. They sense the voltage and they can also shunt the current so that when the cell is full, they can waste the heat on these resistors here. So the PCB here only has room for 36 of these guys. The, the high voltage isolation requires that I keep three millimeters around each one of these. Also inside of the case here, there's some bars that are kind of annoyingly in the way. So what you end up having to do is you do 36 of the cells here. So if you are only installing 36 cells, you only need the Linsight PCB. If you're installing 48 or more, you need one of these additional boards here. Now this board plugs in with just two wires and it plugs in right here. And you can see right here, I actually have writing on this guy that says, you know, whatever whatever the address should be, etc. So you'll have to set the address on this guy, which is just by setting some jumpers. And then once you've done that, it's just two wires. You screw IMA and IPA. Now, IMA is not IMA for the inside. It's just the I minus blah, blah, blah signal for the digital differential pair that this communicates with. Um, so basically it'll plug in with it, a ethernet looking cable here on one side and we'll use two of those leads that will route to there. There are no other connections. So this is actually powered off of the battery. Um, just as these are all powered off the battery, these are completely isolated. So even if you end up hooking your battery wrong and you fry the board and you have accidentally, you know, hook a hundred volts here and zero volts there, which will certainly break it. You'll destroy this whole part of the board but you won't destroy anything else and you won't get anything back here on the signals. There's actually complete galvanic isolation. And I've done that here with some isolation transformers. This board will behave the same way. Um, now you will need to put this board in the case uh, because it's going to be very high voltage, right? You'll be tapping this onto the end of your stack. So you'll put cell you know, 0 through 12, 13, 26, uh, 27 through 36. If I did my math right, I, whatever. And then you'll start here on cell 37 all the way up to 48. Uh, so this guy will be floating around, you know, 200 volts possibly. Now the pack I'll note is ground referenced in the center. Um, it's otherwise completely isolated. So the negative on the pack is not actually the same as the negative on the car. So don't confuse that. The negative is actually capacitively center tapped in the middle of the pack, which is weird. But actually, that's what this lead does, if y'all are curious. This is a center lead tap for the whole system there. So what that means is both the negative and the positive end of this pack are high voltage. The middle of the pack, incidentally, is actually fairly low voltage. So kind of digressed there a bit. But ultimately, you have 36 cells that go on here. If you add more than 36 cells, you'll need one of these for every 12 cells. And they'll all just keep plugging in daisy chain style using the two leads. Uh, you don't want to plug into here 
all of your devices because uh, that will make a star network which is not good for the high speed data bus this is using. So you'll want to plug in from here to here and then if you're using 60 cells you'll plug in from here to the next one. If you're using 72 cells you'll plug in from the next one to the next one etc. The last thing I want to talk about is this guy. This comes with the LEAF modules. When you buy the LEAF battery pack it will come with something like this. If you're converting your own battery and you're using this 4S1P modification, unfortunately you won't be able to use this, this cool nifty device, but you will be able to use the bus bars out of it. So if I turn this guy over and open it up, there and there, um, you won't be reusing this, so don't be fashioned by accidentally breaking it. So, what we have here is the actual bus bars we want. Now these actually just push out. So there's, if you take a little flat blade, they come out easily. I don't really have one, so I'm gonna push it out. This is the piece you want, and this is what you're gonna use to daisy chain all the cells together. The battery sense leads, which you'll need to hook up to the Linsight PCB here. You can reuse some of these OEM ones, but ultimately they're gonna be kind of short. Um, there is a connector this plugs into um, that will will lengthen it out, but I think that the best thing is going to be to actually just get eyelets uh, and just screw eyelets on. Uh, this could be a little complicated. And then again, you'll want to put all these wires in uh, some kind of tube like I've shown you before right here. Uh, that's coming around over to here. You'll want to put them in a tube because either with both the 36 and 48S, these hook straight up to the battery. Now, if you accidentally short some of these out, the current is going to immediately incinerate these leads. So you probably won't have a fire if you say you nick it on the corner here, but you don't want to do that. That's, you're just playing with fire there, literally, I guess. Um, so put these in some kind of nice raceway, you know, so that they fit well, so that when they come over the top, they don't get damaged. Uh, you could probably route them, if you don't want to route them on top, which is, you certainly can route them on top, you could probably route it through there as well. Uh, you don't want to route it back over to this side because there's going to be some noise over there that might affect your, your measurements. Um, we, we have really good filtering on the Linsight PCB, but I, I think you could still have issues. So, yeah, that is 48S. It's tight, but it will work.